Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, tonight's story, The Case of the Assassin in the Dark. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. A criminal is a cunning animal. He trains himself to break the law just as the district attorney trains himself to enforce it. Each regards the other as an enemy, and enmity leads inevitably to violence. But violence was far from my mind the night this started. Harrington and I were driving home from the annual police frolics. <laughs> what are you laughing at, are you? Oh, those cops. Dressed up like can-can girls in that chorus number. Did you ever see anything like it, Chief? They <laughs> <laughs> were very funny. Yeah. And the commissioner, old Stoneface himself. I almost died when he did that imitation of that dame, uh, you know, uh, uh, why don't you come up and see me sometime? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the commissioner's a good sport. <laughs> yeah, tonight. But let one of the boys goof on an assignment tomorrow and whoom, through the roof. Well, that's his job, Harrington. If things go wrong, he catches it from the mayor. Oh, uh, speaking of the mayor, Chief, he's worried about you. About me? Why? I'll give it to you in two words. Johnny Gennetti. Oh, forget it. The parole board never should let him out. The parole board had no choice, Harrington. Gennetti served his minimum time. He's been a model prisoner for six years. He's entitled to a break. You mean you told the parole board that in your recommendations? Yes. For a guy who swore he'd get you the minute they put him on the streets? Harrington and I have heard the same threat a hundred times from a hundred different men. Some of them are decent citizens today, and I'm still alive. A man can change a lot in six years. Oh, sure. But someday, one of them is going to hold on to his grudge, though. And Gennetti was the best candidate I ever saw. Forget it. I will be at your house instead of mine. Oops, sorry, Chief. Well, thanks for the ride, Harrington. See you at the office in the morning. Oh, uh, Chief. Yeah? Watch yourself, will you? No, I'll be fine. Good night, Harrington. Good night, Chief. See your shadow there in the corner. Now, who are <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. D.A. What's taking us so long? Why didn't the doctor come out of it? Well, uh, just take it easy, Miss Miller. There's... Nothing we can do but wait. They've been in surgery for two hours. One of the bullets is lodged right near the heart. Don't worry, though. The chief is in good condition. He's tough. Don't try to cheer me up when you don't believe it yourself. Uh, Miss Miller, I... he dies? If only I could talk to him. If only I could talk to him for just a minute. You work for a man for years. Your heart's all wrapped up in him. You have to have pride and dignity because you're a girl and you can never say anything about it or do anything about it. I want to see him. Just for a minute. Is that too much to pray for? Miss Miller, I... I... Edith, uh, listen to me. What? Even if we can see him later, whether the doctor thinks he has a chance or not, make sure of what you intend to do or say. Why? He doesn't even know I'm alive. Except for being a secretary in the office. Oh, he knows you're alive. Oh, yes. Not the way I want him to know it. You know how I feel about him. Yeah, yeah. But he doesn't. So 
suppose... Well, suppose you tell him. Suppose you do, and later on he's all right. What are you going to do then? Go back to the office and just work like nothing happened? You mean... You never care for me, don't you? No, no, no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't say that. <laughs> Some people just... Well, they just can't afford love, either. They can feel it inside, but they can't show it for fear of hurting. Someday, if he lives, Chief may run for a different kind of office. Mayor or governor. Something safe that he can share with a woman. If you've got anything to say to him, that would be the day to say it. Thanks, Harrington. Uh, as long as I'm making speeches, I'll... I'll tell you something else. Maybe it'll help you understand. There was a time for two years when you first came to work for the chief. But I thought of quitting, asking a girl to marry me. I never knew that. I know you didn't. But you should have. You were the girl. Here I go. Don, it's all right. It's all right. I got over it. Now, do me a favor, will you? And forget I ever told you. Okay? No, I'll never mention it, but I'll never forget it. I'll be all right now. That's all I wanted to... What is it? Doctor just came out of surgery. He's coming down the hall. How is he, Doctor? We managed to remove the fourth bullet, all right. But Give it to us straight. Then it's critical. If we can keep him alive for a few days, he's got a chance. About one chance in four. He's going to need transfusions of whole blood every day, starting right now. I may be. We need type O. Well, then you can start with me. I'm type O. Good. Go down the hall and tell the nurse. She'll make the preparations. I'll be there in just a minute. You sure it's okay, Miss Miller? I'm all right. I'll have a man from the staff check with you. Typing. And you can count on any cop in the city as a donor. Good. We'll need him. Say, is that one of your men looking for you? Just came in down there? Hmm? Oh, oh, yeah. Are you going to wait? No, no, I still have a job to do. I'll keep in touch by phone. See you later. Oh, Jeff. Oh, there you are, Harrington. I was looking in the waiting rooms. How's the chief? One chance in four. But I swear to you, that's more of a chance than Jeanette's going to have. What have you found out? He got a job driving a laundry truck yesterday, the uh, White Flash Laundry. Uh huh. We also got a statement from a woman who lives around the corner of Mr. Garrett's apartment. What? She couldn't sleep. She heard the shots. So did a few other people. Well, her statement goes a little further than that, though. The shooting happened at 1.30. Yeah? About a half hour before that, when she couldn't fall asleep, she looked out her front window. There was a white flash laundry truck parked in front of her house. When she heard the police cars, after the shooting, she came out into the street. The truck was gone. Want an all-points pickup on Janetti? Yes. And make it dead or alive. We'll play it whichever way he wants it. You guys want to see me? That's right. You own this laundry? Yeah. You come about the ad for root men? No, this is police business. You got a driver named Johnny Janetti? That bum. What's he done? We'll tell him. Where is he? Huh. Where is he? Wish I knew. Because wherever he is, that's where his root collections are, too, the bum. He worked one day and he doesn't show up this morning. I even had to go for the truck. You're a pretty trusting soul for one day. What's your name? Charlie Drake. I've seen this boy someplace before, Harrington. Yeah, so have I. I don't think his name is Drake. Charlie Frisco in my book. Talk up, Charlie. You're one of the Frisco brothers, aren't you? It's Drake now. I had to change legal. Didn't you know Janetti was an ex-con when you hired him? I don't think so much before you answer, Charlie. You might guess wrong. Janetti's first conviction was with one of your brothers. Okay, so I knew. I figured he wanted a chance to go straight, so I gave it to him. A bum. Did you report your truck missing when he didn't come in this morning with the root collections? No. Why not? I don't blow no police whistle. Watch Janetti's address. Come on, come on. You pick the truck up there. Watch the address. 3120 Mason Street. Can I use your phone? For a dime you can, copper. You get it. We won't need a squad, Harrington. He's on the run. Just the same. I want to stake out there and here while we search the place.
Closet's empty. Drawer's empty. Whatever he had, he took it with him, Harrington. Yeah, I guess so. And maybe he's going to... What is it? Somebody out in the hall. Boys outside would have spotted him. I told him to keep under cover. Let him come in if he shows. Get your gun ready. Okay. Open it. Miss <laughs> Miller. I couldn't see the room numbers in the dark hall. What's the matter? I've been back to the office. There's no phone here, so I had to come out. Why? The police across the river found Johnny Gennetti an hour ago. Where? Chief Hotel. He's dead. Dead? Left a note saying that the police would never get him as long as he'd had the pleasure of killing Mr. Garrett. First time a killer ever saved us the trouble of finding him. Maybe he isn't the one who shot Mr. Garrett after all. He's the one, all right. How do you know? Lab reports. Sent wire photos through to our ballistics department in comparison. The gun Jeanette killed himself with is the same one that was used to shoot Mr. Garrett. That does it, then? Yeah. Uh, what's the latest on the chief, Miss Miller? How is he? I... Called the hospital just before I came out. It's worse. He's in a coma. A man I couldn't see in the darkness had attempted to assassinate me in my own apartment. Harrington suspected and sought a man who was newly paroled from prison and had once threatened to kill me. But when the man was found, he was seemingly a suicide and had written a note of confession concerning the attempt on my life. For more than a week, I hovered between life and death. And then on the morning of the ninth day... Just a little more oxygen, eh? Well, how is he, Doc? Pneumonia complication is gone. His fever broke about an hour ago. It's just a question of bringing him around. Now. <sighs> you hear that, Miss Miller? Oh, yes. That transfusion you gave him right after we removed the bullet helped a great deal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. well, now we're getting some places coming out of it. All right, nurse. Take off the inhalator mask. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hiya, Chief. Harrington. Miss Miller. <laughs> well, there's nothing to cry about, Miss Miller. Well, he's out of the woods now. You can stay about 15 minutes. Just don't tire him. Oh, we won't, Doc. We won't. Uh, thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> don't mention it. I'll help you wield that out. I, uh, I told Miss Miller, Chief, you were too tough to kill. Didn't I, Miss Miller? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Whoever did it tried hard enough. Oh, we know who did it. Who? Johnny Gennetti. I warned you about him, Chief. You sure you're right? Oh, by his own confession. Written just before he killed himself with the same thirty-eight he used on you. I guess he knew we'd get him sooner or later. He wrote a confession. Yeah, that's right. He said... Come in. Harrington, can I... Oh, Mr. Garrett, you're all right. Oh, what they call doing this. Well, this can be expected, yeah? Sit down. Uh, thanks, Mr. Garrett, but I, uh, I just stopped in for a second. I have to see Harrington about something. Can you step outside for a second, Harrington? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Secrets? Oh, no, no, just something personal. I'll be right back. Well, just don't stay with the chief, Miss Miller. Talk to him. All right. Come on, Jeff. What's up? I just rode into the emergency ward downstairs in an ambulance. A kid about 15, all cut up by a broken bottle. Uh Uh-huh. He says a gang of hoodlums jumped him, beat him up, and robbed him. Took six dollars worth of nickels. What, is he a newsboy? No, a high school kid. Why so many nickels? He says he hit the jackpot in the slot machine on his way home from school. Where? Back room of a candy store near the school. A slot machine? That's what he said. You send anybody out there to look for the machine? Well, the kid doesn't know the address of the store or the name of the owner. There are half a dozen places within two blocks of the school. Besides, a back room. We need warrants. Well, get them. Go to Judge Bennett and get an order to search every place within a mile of there. That's the first slot machine in this county in five years. It's the first of a lot of things in five years, if you ask me. What do you mean by that? There's a mob moving in. I can feel it. Get the warrants. Come back and pick me up. Okay. You got back just in time, Harrington. I just finished telling Mr. Garrett about... The... Yeah, I know. I heard. Jeanette, he saved the state a lot of trouble. What's wrong, Harrington? Oh, nothing. Not a thing, Chief. Everything's just fine. You'd better tell me, Harrington, because I've got something to tell you. Well, a kid's just been hurt after hitting a slot machine. whole county feels tight and restless like it's going to bust wide open. 
Who's behind it? Yeah, we don't know. Want me to tell you how to find out? How? Find the man who tried to kill me. But it was Giannetti who tried... Yeah, it wasn't Johnny Giannetti. But he said... Left a written confession. Written by whom? Don't you remember when we arrested him? He was an illiterate. He couldn't read or write. Hey, hey. what's going on in here? Doctor, a problem has come up that... That may put you right back where you started from. I ask you not to tire him or excite him. It's my fault, I... Yeah, give me a wrist. Stop trying to sit up. Yeah, his pulse is a way up. You'll have to leave. Oh, doctor, doctor, give me two minutes. Two minutes to outline a plan. And from there on, if you'll cooperate with Harrington, he can handle it. I know you're not a fool, Mr. Garrett. So this must be important. All right. What do you want? Get a couple of chairs over here and I'll tell you. What do you got to hug the whole table for, Charlie? Why, why can't I take a cue in place? Because I don't want you to, Puggin. You act like a dummy, so stand there and look like one, too. Who do you think you're talking to? I'm talking to you. Look at that newspaper. Garrett's getting better. He knows it wasn't Janetti who gunned him. But Janetti, you make it good, but with him, you got to louse it up. I'm not going to take a chance on you, Poggin. What's that supposed to mean? I can hire other guns to make sure nobody talks about me. If the heat comes on, you go out like a light. Unless you pick up the job you started and finish it. Now? What's the matter, you crazy? How do you think I'm going to do that? Great! You want? Come in here. You ever been a nurse? One of them things bounce up and hits in the head. Get Benny to forge you some papers. Then go to a private nursing service and register. What for? Because Poggin's going to need a nurse when he goes into the hospital tonight. You'll case Garrett's room, find out when he's alone and asleep, and when the night nurse is off the floor. Then... Now get going, both of you. Let me finish my game. Just admitted downstairs. Special request for a room on the fifth floor. I just want to get away from the sound of street traffic. No, no, not this baby. Torpedoes spelled all over. Well, uh, this guy asked him to call a nursing agency, too. Wants his own nurse. He don't look that sick. That could mean something. You set for the night? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what you have to do. Yeah. Is the doc okay? Uh, just once. He's got me bandaged up pretty good. Well, if you can't make it, yell right away. I will, I will. Go ahead now so I can put the lights up here. Good night, Chief. Good night. And good hunting. before you got that bed stuff with the pillows and got yourself in here. After that guy's nurse looked at you. Was she... What's that? Oh, 
parking lot down behind the building. What's the matter? What's happened down there? It's me, Harrington. Yeah. We got two of that guy's playmates trying to take off in a car. Who? The nurse and Charlie Crystal. I didn't want to do this. Well, Pop, I'll tell you anything. Ah, Frank. Shut them up and take them in, Jeff. And on the way, pick up Fisco's brothers. Right. Hear that, Chief? I heard. Didn't see all the regular patients have moved out of this wing. Yeah, let me give you a hand. There's another room down the hall. <laughs> you don't want to sleep here until they caught that torpedo out, whoever he is. You can do with more pleasant surroundings. Mind if I ask you something personal? Hmm? Oh, go ahead. Hey, what's been going on lately between you and Miss Miller? I don't know what you mean. She's been looking at you strangely lately. I noticed it during visits. There was something about you puzzled her. Oh, just a little private joke I played on her? I got a puzzle. Uh, let's go in here. Hmm. What kind of a joke? Well, nothing much. I'll tell you about it someday. You will, huh? Mm-hmm. Now, lie down. I'll call the doctor to come up and look at you. Oh, well, Harrington. You don't want to tell me, do you? Oh, sure, sure. Sometime. Nothing important, just a little joke. Okay. It's your secret. Just remember what I told you before. What? You're a very bad liar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Good night, Andy. Good night, Chief. He must have told her how he felt about it. Boy, Harrington. I guess he thought I didn't know. I thought something like that could be going on in my office without my sensing it. <laughs> Faced with the incriminating testimony of Grace Brewster, Charlie Frisco and his three brothers entered pleas of guilty to conspiracy to commit murder, two counts. And accessories to murder, one count. They are serving sentences of 99 years each. For complicity, Grace Brewster is serving 20 years. Now, this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the file of Mr. District Attorney. You have been listening to Mr. District Attorney, which has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.